True or false, we should forgive someone only after they first seek out forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did um, a panelist submit it? Uh, yes, I did. That's, that's mine. Oh, okay. So you have to go last, Ben. Yep. Okay, Ben, restrain yourself. Who wants to go first? I will. Um, okay. This is actually one of my favorite topics, believe it or not. Um, forgiveness is not for the other person, I don't believe. Forgiveness is for yourself and your well-being, your peace of mind, and your relationship with Jesus. Um, so for that fact, and the fact that Jesus told us to forgive 70 times, seven times, I don't believe the person has to ask for forgiveness. In fact, I promise I'm not boasting, but I make it a, um, a, a um, part of my life that if someone hurts me, I forgive them immediately because if I don't, I will stew on it and it will hurt me and hurt me and hurt me. Staying angry at someone, all it does is eat away at yourself, eat away at your spirituality, eat away at your physical body. And so for that reason, I think it's very, very important to forgive, not for the sake of the other person, but for yourself and for your relationship with Jesus. Uh, all right, I was uh, trying to type in a search for something while, so that was I was a little slow. Um, okay, uh, who wants to answer next? Next, I'll go next because right. I'm just gonna cheat. And I'm gonna use my. Uh, you know, do we get passes here, and do we get <laughs> do we get where we get a cheat, a little cheat button or coin? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just ride the coattails of what Heather said, because I agree with everything she said. And I would just be reiterating what she said, that forgiveness is, is really for you. And, and uh, except for like one other thing, because if you, if you let unforgiveness turn into bitterness, um, bitterness, I, I really believe um, is the root of many people's diseases, some beginnings of their diseases and problems that they have. Uh, the Bible talks about the the root of business actually ruining your your faith. So you have to you have, <laughs> you have to be very very uh, careful with that, and and uh, always I think to remain humble, um, and be willing to forgive. Like she says, just a good practice to go ahead and have, you know, uh, and let God deal with the things that the person does. I mean that's up to the Lord, but. Um, uh, yeah, I, I I definitely agree that it is for the other, it's for yourself uh, to keep you from um, like maybe even ruining your health, your peace of mind. There's a whole bunch of things that are attributed to that. But then when the other person, if they do even come back ever and, and seek forgiveness, it's not something I have a habit of. I don't even let them say anything. I just, I'll just hug them and say, don't worry about it. I, I already forgave you. You really don't even have to apologize. You want to get it off your chest so you can feel better. You can, but I already forgave you, you know, so that's good. Okay, thank you. Well, I uh, just posted a, uh, a quote here in the chat room. It says, quote, bitterness is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Uh I've heard that stated in various ways, but it, it really is the truth that, that uh, you know, we hold on to this uh, un being unwilling to forgive, being bitter about about uh, something somebody did. And really, it, it, it's not it's not hurting the other person. You're hurting yourself. It is a poison that will eventually just make you sick and maybe die. Uh, so really, it is true that uh, the, the reason we should forgive is it more for our own benefit than anybody else. Matter, matter of fact, um, even if you never talk to a person and let them know that you've forgiven them, 
uh, if you have forgiven them, at least you got it off your chest and it's not going to be eating at you and bitterness, you know, hurting you. Uh, so I forget how the question was uh, posed, but um, uh, I forgot. Can you read it again? I forgot what it said. Uh, we should, yes, true or false. We should forgive someone only after they seek our forgiveness. Oh, I, I would say that if a person doesn't seek a forgiveness or if, if they're uh, um, if you haven't been able to work it out with a the person, um, then I would say that would affect my uh, uh, ability and desire to want to uh, have a friendship or fellowship with them. Um, just because we forgive someone, it doesn't mean that we are, are uh, obligated to continue having a friendship. Uh, particularly if someone um, has done something over and over again, it would be foolish. It's like petting a dog that bit you and you keep going back and petting him and getting bit over and over again. You should learn your lesson that this is a, a vicious dog and you need to avoid it. And there are people that we just need to avoid, even though holding on to bitterness against them is going to hurt us. We need to forgive them for that reason. Okay. Uh, how about uh, Sister Renee? What do you say? Yeah, well, Paul made it clear that um, it's dark in here and my dog's in it. Paul made it clear that we have already been forgiven. And so we're supposed to forgive because Jesus forgave us. And so we don't wait for somebody to ask us to forgive them. The minute we're offended, uh, we, we need to forgive or whatever we've harbored from the past, we need to forgive. And forgive does not mean you you still have the person in your life always. It, it, if that person is destructive and they've harmed you, it said be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So you don't, it doesn't mean when you forgive someone, it, it just means you give them over to God. You don't harbor evil towards them. You don't let hate weigh you down and you begin to give out the grace that God has given you. And, you know, a lot of people are so judgmental be, because they don't have grace. They, they don't understand God's grace. So they certainly can't give you grace. They can't give what they've never gotten. They have this, uh, instead of having where sin abounds, grace did much more abound, super abound, hyper abound. They have this measly grace that you got to beg God for and qualify for, which isn't grace at all. So um, the forgiveness is really for us so that we have peace and we show the love of God in Christ. Um, and there's a lot of benefit to it. What, you know, we've heard the, the little uh, line that hatred and resentment is like drinking poison and hoping the other person dies. You know, because you only harm yourself when you harbor all that. And no, we don't wait for someone to ask us to forgive them. We need to. And, and I want to mention, the Bible says we die daily. If Renee is dead, and we're going to, Heather said we need to mention in the chat. If Renee is dead, Renee cannot get offended at everything somebody says. If it's really I died for me to live as Christ, to die as gain, then I don't get offended when I think somebody uh, disagrees with me or may have been poking a jab at me or even called me a name. And I know that's hard, but do dead persons get offended? No, they don't. And so I, I really hope this is one thing we can all grow in is this need to get upset and get offended all the time at everybody and take stuff so personal. I, that, that is the worst in the Christian church. And, and that's a place we need to grow spiritually. So no, we don't wait for people to ask for forgiveness. We certainly forgive because we've already been forgiven. Okay. Let me see who, uh, Lisa, did you answer this one? 
Yeah, I cheated off of Heather's paper. Okay, yeah, that's right. So everybody's answered? All right, I guess uh, anybody want to uh, say any more about it? Did Ben go? Yeah. Okay, Ben. Ben, I keep on forgetting about you for some reason. I think it's because you're up there at the top, and I kind of your picture is at the top of my screen, and I miss you. Um. Well, th this is kind of a tricky question because, um, you know, for example, uh, take the take the example of Corinthians five five, where that he had that adulterous man who was proud, you know, proud of his sin, uh, unrepentant, and they kicked him out of the church. Uh, and so, even though we might forgive him from the heart. Uh, I don't think we necessarily should, you know, lax all discipline or, uh, on a person just because of that. So I think we should forgive people from the heart. But uh, in terms of uh, how we deal with them, like you guys mentioned before about um, you, know, you may, may not want to continue your friendship with them or whatever. Uh, I think that's, that, that's uh, perfectly fine. Um, but I, I like what you guys said about the, uh, the forgiveness really being much about the, you know, important for the forgiver. So it doesn't poison their heart. And I think that's exactly what the parable that Jesus gave in Matthew 18 about the unforgiving servant, where he says, but that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat saying, pay me what you owe me. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him saying, have patience with me and I will repay you. And he would not. He, and he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay his debt. So when his fellow servants saw that he, what he had been, what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, "You wicked servant! I forgave you all the debt because you begged me. Should you not have also had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you?" And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until the until he should pay all that was due him so my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses and again this is a parable so this is not teaching uh you know god if you don't forgive your brother even if god forgive you your sin and you're going to hell this is a parable and so and so parables people a lot of times try to take you know every they take every uh symbol in the parable and as and try to extract some you know uh, meaning, you know, deep meaning from it. And again, the parables are have an overall uh, message and not, you know, we're not supposed to get lost in the details. And I think the message is, in this parable, is that, you know, this guy was going to be handed over to the, tor to the tormentors until he forgave his servant. And so all he had to do to stop his torture, his torment, was to forgive his servant. And I think that's what happens exactly what, when we don't forgive someone is it, it's really a, a detriment to ourselves and all we have to do is forgive that person from the heart and we will cease to be uh tormented or poisoned in that respect our, our heart you know won't be defiled in that respect so it's up to us it's, it's a it's a detriment against us not to forgive and i think i know heather called that out uh i think all you guys called that out so i thought that was really great uh yeah I, I...